speaker today, Kevin Gaston. He is an alumni of ESRM here at... What? What? Yeah, all right. And he has been uh, fortunate enough to start his career and maintain it right around here in Ventura County. He works for the Mountain Restoration Trust and has climbed the ladder within that uh, corporation to go from a starting level employee up to a director now. What? What? He will be telling us about what he actually does in his job, the pros, the cons, how he got there. And um, giving you a little bit of advice for what you can do here as students to follow in his footsteps. Uh, he is okay being interrupted with questions, so raise your hand if you have something you'd like to ask him. And then at the end, as usual, we will open it up to a broad Q&A. So, without further ado, let's all welcome Kevin. Woo, 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 woo. All right, well, cool. Thanks, everyone. Uh, like she said, I'm Kevin Gaston. I'm the Director of Planning and Strategy at Mountain Restoration Trust. That's We're a amazing. land trust based out in Calabasas. Um, if you don't know what land trust is, that's all right. My wife doesn't eat it. <laughs> uh, we'll get to that later about the uh, specifics of what I do. Um, so yeah, I graduated from ESRM in 2015. I've worked for MRT ever since. Um, within that time period, though, there's been a lot of change within the organization and also within the work I do. Uh, so I'm going to kind of break things down a little bit um, and see where we're at there. Um, one of the themes I'm really going to come back to frequently, just in terms of if you know, you're assigned what you're going to do for your career, is adaptability. Um, I mean, it's not just for your own skill set. Um, you know, with YouTube, things like that, if you don't know Python programming, that's fine. You can learn that fairly easily um, today. Um, but also with your interests. Um, there's a lot of times throughout my career where I thought I wanted to take it one trajectory. Um, and as I kind of evaluated the situation, it became clear I could do that, but it may not be as easy, it may not be as fast, um, so I changed the course a little bit. Um, and, you know, I think it's good at moments to really dig in your heels and, you know, stick to the course. Uh, but what I found is it's much easier to slow down, evaluate, uh, see where you can slide around and have some success. So that's just kind of the general theme uh, throughout my career. Uh, so I threw this presentation together pretty quick, so forgive the icons. Um, so this kind of tracks the general course of my career thus far. Um, I joined State Parks um, pretty soon after I got to college. This was about in 2012. Um, many of you should know by this point that the environmental world isn't the most lucrative, perhaps. So what? Many of us, I what? Know, it's shocking. Uh, many of us do have sort of a motivation behind um, I think that's a great thing. It really gives a lot of passion to our field. Um, for me, it was uh, surfing, actually. I grew up uh, a little east of Irvine, kind of inland Orange County. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, so actually, contrary to my current hobbies as a kid, uh, my parents really had forced me out the door. I was all obsessed with video games, never went outside. Uh, it wasn't until I got my driver's license that I could drive 45 minutes down <laughs> to the beach that I started to actually interact with the environment and the outdoors. Um, so for many people, it is that recreational uh, introduction, I would say. Um, that was certainly the case for me. Um, once I came to CI, I really chose CI just because of its proximity to the coast. I was just telling Sean about that today. Um, and it was really the spring of my freshman year that I fell in love, not just with the oceans, but also with the mountains. I lived here on campus in the dorms. Uh, quick, easy drive down to Sycamore Canyon, La Jolla Canyon. Um, I just fell in love. This was before the Springs fire swept through and burned it all. Uh, so I was just blown away by the sticky monkey flower, the purple sage, the sea mothis. Uh, really just opened my eyes to what the environment could be. Um, so yeah, that kind of was my introduction. Because I cared so much about these canyons, and those canyons were owned by the state parks, I pursued a job there. So summer of 2012, Got a job as a park aide. I was that dweeby little 19 year old in the pair of militaristic uniform, <laughs> charging me $45 to park on dirt. That's <laughs> kind of how it went. Um, it was an interesting job. I did enjoy it. I got camp for free, which was nice. Um, it really taught me, I would say, how to interact with strangers. Um, I've always been kind of a recluse, uh, kind of like the solitude. Um, and not only interacting with strangers, but also resolving conflict. Uh, again, I was this little 19-year-old kid telling these drunk 40-year-old construction workers that it's 11 o'clock and they need to go to bed because uh, there's other campers nearby. Uh, so just learning to resolve conflicts, keep sort of a stoke resolve, deflate the situation, 
Um, I still use that uh, to this day. Uh, you could say I graduated some after about two years. I went to the National Park Service. This also was in San Joaquin Mountains. Um, at this point, I was really kind of going down the law enforcement route. Um, that's just kind of natural with the state parks. I <clears throat> went from the kiosk down to actually working in the patrol car, resolving conflicts in the campground. Um, started doing kind of ride-alongs with uh, my law enforcement officers. Uh, my plan was essentially to half-ass school and then go to the academy, do that for six months, and then uh, be a Yoho Ranger. Um, so I come to the National Park saying like, okay, this is the perfect avenue, this is my senior year of college, uh, this is just the perfect uh, inlet for me here. Uh, frankly, I didn't have the best experience there. Uh, part of the issue was the guy who hired me suddenly... He calls field weird, so this is at some point on San Rosa Island. Uh, sometimes the heat kind of gets you. <laughs> So, um, the reason I left the park is a little dramatic. He surveyed a culvert, and I avoided the oak, but my coworker never reacted, so he went right through it. And later he <laughs> gave me his clipboard. So I slapped it on my forearm and took notes, and there you go. Uh, this is a fun story. I like this one. Um, this is a GPS track. This GPS was on my back. <laughs> So me and my buddy were coming up the creek, doing well, doing well, and right around here, uh, I stepped on a beehive. <laughs> so suddenly, I'm sprinting back and forth throughout the creek, trying to you know, whip things off, run back and forth. Uh, I think I ended up with about 30 bee stings that day. My lymph nodes were the size of a gold. Uh, it was pretty hard, to be sure. Um, so kind of as, you know, as I started to see this and kind of saw the benefits of office work, um, <laughs> this is a moment that I did kind of dig my heels in a bit. I talked to my boss and said, yes, I'll be in the office more, but I want to do that office work from home. Oh. you're working in the open space world, you probably have never heard of MRT. Um, so this is just a quick look, different colors represent if it's managed by us, owned by us, easement, what have you. Um, this here is Las Virginas, so this is Malibu Creek State Park, this is Topanga State Park, so we kind of, this is Cold Creek Preserve. Uh, this kind of forms kind of a corridor between those two. Uh, we also have the La Sierra Preserve here, which is only about 125 acres. Uh, we're opening an escrow on 10 acres next month. Um, and then this is probably gonna be our area of growth, largely due to the Woolsey Fire. Um, when fire comes through, people start thinking, eh, maybe this isn't the place for our dream home. Um, so there's a lot of movement in the real estate market after June of 2016, uh, the old fire broke out in Calabasas. You've probably never heard of it. It was only about 150 acres or so. It was actually started by an off-duty fireman, uh, which I don't think they need job security right now, but maybe that's what it was after. <laughs> uh, he was driving his truck down the Holmes Highway, spilled something on his lab, looked down, knocked over a utility pole, sparked a quick fire. Uh, we were the only structural loss, so this is our office building that burned down. Uh, that was our kitchen on the right. Um, so yeah, this, this really changed things quite a bit for us. Um, a woman named Jo Kitts, she ran MRT for decades. Um, she retired just a week before I started. Oh, again, kind of a weird uh, trend I'm noticing. Um, <laughs> And so I really think that the programs, the relationships, the infrastructure that she had established were still there in my first year. After the fire, we kind of lost our greeting space. This was our conference room. We can't really host meetings at anymore. Um, so it really kind of changed. You can see pretty clearly the fire started on this side of the building. And you know, by the time we got here, maybe the firemen got there. Uh, the reason for that was there was a wooden patio cover on this side. Uh, that's one of the big no-nos these days in terms of building and fire-prone areas. Uh, you can kind of see it in the last slide, too, these old uh, lumber there. Um, so, you yeah, know, when we eventually rebuild, uh, we will likely have this front and center as a display. Uh, ever since then, we've been located out of the Masson House. Um, it's the oldest standing homestead in Calabasas. That's been our office for four years. 
As you can imagine, a homestead doesn't have great insulation or aspects were working their way in as well. Um, as you can imagine, there's not a lot of funds in environmental science. So the funds that are available, people fight over a bit, right? The first I like it because it allows them to kind of keep these people on a string without giving them permanent positions. At the same time, it does get